Hi, this is a quick video to show off how the new texture packing system in Megasplat 1.5 works. Uh, this is a compatibility breaking update. Uh, if you are using the old system, you will have to repack your arrays. However, I think you'll find that you can do that very quickly um, and that the convenience of this uh, is uh, more than makes up for it. Um, and if you're new to Megasplat, uh, this will replace the previous uh, demos of how this is done. So, the first thing you do is you create a new Megasplat uh, texture array config in some directory somewhere, and you give it a name. And so I'm going to call this the demo one. Now, the interface here for this object is in several major areas, and I'm going to roll these up uh, so we can talk about them individually. Uh, so basically what you have is you have the uh, array output settings and this controls the final resolution uh, and things like that of the resulting texture arrays. Um, so you'll notice here there's a diffuse uh, chunk of settings, a normal chunk of settings, the emissive chunk of settings, and then the alpha settings. And then finally there's the physics data uh, if you're going to generate uh, physics offsets. Um, so each array, the hardware requires that every array uh, have all textures in the same size. Um, and so you select the output size here, which I'm going to set to 1024, uh, whether you want them compressed or not, the filtering mode, like bilinear, and then you can set the um, anisotropic level. So uh, this is basically how you control the outputs, um, your sort of final formats and stuff. Um, let's skip over the batch importer for a second and we'll talk about the textures tab. Uh, so this is where you add the actual textures. And uh, what you do is you click Add Texture, and you get a, a slot here. You can use a substance. Uh, so we now have a substance importer. If you have substances, you can put them uh, in here. And then um, as long as they have the outputs for all the channels, it will uh, generate the data and put it into the arrays. Um, and then here you have slots for each type of texture you might need. And I say might because uh, metallic, emissive, and alpha are optional. Uh, if you provide any of these uh, textures, it's going to output um, extra arrays for this data. Uh, but most people uh, aren't using metallic, emissive, or alpha in their surfaces and are only working on, uh, you know, the, the, the sort of five, or sorry, um, five inputs for PBR. Um, and so you can select your textures here and, uh, you know, set them all up manually. And if I only have, say, a diffuse map here, uh, then what the texture packer will do is it'll automatically generate a height map from that diffuse map, and then it'll generate a normal map from that height map, and a smoothness and AO map as well. Uh, so if you don't provide all of these inputs, it's going to generate them anyway, uh, using a process similar to like Crazy Bump or one of those programs. Uh, now you obviously get the best pro uh, quality by providing these yourself, uh, but if you're missing one of the maps, it's going to generate them automatically. And you'll notice here there's an invert option for smoothness in case you have uh, roughness textures. And then on this channel here, you can see that it's asking, uh, so let's just put something in here for height. Um, so let's put anything in there for now. Uh, it's asking which channel do I get the data from? Uh, so if you have your, your stuff just in sort of black and white textures, uh, you probably want to grab them from, you know, the one of the color channels. Uh, but sometimes you already have your textures packed in a certain format where you've put the height map in the alpha or something like that. Uh, so what you could do is you could actually say, no, you know, what I really want is I want it in the alpha channel. And finally on this option is a custom option, which is basically if every texture needs its own settings uh, when you have multiple of these, right, when you have like a bunch of these. Um, so that's basically how this uh, configuration works. Um, now there's a quicker way to do all of this because obviously if you're setting up 60 textures this way, it's going to take quite a bit of time. Uh, it'll still take less time than packing them all, but it's still a lot of work. Um, so what we can do is go to the batch importer here. And with the batch importer, we can give if, uh, you should always name your files in a, in a nice way so you know what kind of data they are. And um, these are my naming conventions. Uh, but if I have a diffuse map, I call it underscore diffuse, uh, normal, height, smoothness, AO, metal, emissive, alpha. Uh, you can put whatever you want in here for your extensions. You can even repeat uh, if you have your diffuse, uh, if you have your height map in the diffuse, you could set this to diffuse here. 
And then what you can do is click batch import. And so what I'm going to do is select the mega splat um, included uh, textures directory. And we go to examples, uh, textures, and hit choose. And boom, it is imported everything and slotted into the correct channel um, for our entire um, set of 60 textures. So uh, if you name your stuff correctly, very, very fast to get it in here. Um, now, let's go down and let's go ahead and update this array. Um, so there's this update uh, button right here at the bottom. You can also sort the array uh, to keep it in alphabetical order. Um, but when I hit update, what it's actually going to do is pack all these textures into texture arrays. Now, if you're used to the old Megasplat, uh, it did this very, very quickly. Uh, it only took like a split second to update. Now it takes actually a little while. Why does it take so long? Well, because it's, it's actually doing a lot more work now. Uh, in the original one, it was just copying your textures in because it expected you to actually take the height and put it into the alpha channel of the fuse or pack the smoothness and AO in with the normal. Uh, now it's doing all that work for you, so it takes a little longer to update. Um, and you have to explicitly press this button now. In the old uh, version, when you updated the texture, it would just update automatically because it was very quick. But now that it takes a while, it makes much more sense to have to hit the button when you're done updating all your textures. Um, so, uh, this is going along. And as soon as it's done, it's going to spit out the resulting... Uh, texture arrays for us. This is 60 textures too, so it takes a it takes a little while to do this many textures. Just about done. There we go. Um, let's see here. Let's go to where I put those in the demo folder. So you can see now that it has output this demo diffuse texture array normal SAO array, which means normal with uh, smoothness and, and ambient occlusion map in it. Um, and then it's output this thing called a texture list, which is basically for uh, querying at runtime to know what textures are where on your train. So everything gets output for us. If we need to make changes, we can come back here. We can change around which textures go where, you know, rebuild this thing or whatever. And the final piece that I'm going to talk about is um, the cluster library. So if you're new to Megasplat, uh, the basic idea of clusters is that you provide several textures that are similar but different, uh, and then when you paint, it's going to vary which texture goes where and create this like really nice never tile sort of surface. And so you'll notice that my textures here, uh, you know, I have different variations of each one, and they're named often like 01, 02, 03. Um, so if we uh, let's just close up the setting. So if you look under the cluster library, when I generated that, it picked up that those were named 010203 and said, great, that must be a cluster. And so if we open one of these, like um, let's do the rock cliff, uh, you can see that we have the five uh, textures in this cluster. Um, we could go change these if we wanted to design clusters by ourselves, but for the most part, um, you know, you can just name your files correctly and, and it'll handle it all for you. And this particular cluster uses a noise function to choose which texture goes where. Notice that angle and height are also available. So if you wanted it to, say, paint grass on the, on the flats and uh, paint, um, you know, this thicker, uh, pure rock, sort of as it goes up the hill, you could actually arrange your cluster to do that. Um, so there are other videos talking about texture clusters, so I'm not going to go over this too much. Uh, for the most part, most people don't really touch the cluster library. They just name their files, and uh, let it do its thing. So yeah, so I hope uh, this works out to be a much better workflow for most people. I think it'll save a lot of time, uh, which is always good. 
And um, internally, I found some tricks with the texture format to increase quality a bit, uh, which is really nice. So yeah, hope this video is useful and uh, I'll talk to you soon.